A man walks into a bar and orders a glass of water. The bartender pulls out a gun pointed at the man. The man says, thank you, and walks out of the bar. OK, if you haven't heard this before, you're going, that makes no sense. And I had the same reaction a couple of months ago when my riddle savvy boss challenged me to try and figure it out. He told me it was a lateral thinking riddle where you have to ask questions with yes or no answers to try and figure out what happened. So I absolutely sucked at this game. On the first day, I asked questions like, was the man short? Did he pay for the glass of water? Was the bar in Kabuki Cho? And the answers were no, no, irrelevant. And so three painstaking weeks of trying to crack it later, my boss and I were at Disney Sea for his birthday. Yes, I went to Disney Sea with my boss, that's beside the point. And as we walked from ride to ride, I asked more of these questions in frustration, thinking to myself, why do I suck at this? What questions do I need to ask? What am I missing? What am I missing? Yeah. What am I missing? I had this moment, and in that moment, I totally forgot about the riddle, because I realized that this question, what am I missing, wasn't just a question relating to riddles. It's a question that I have come to think is one of the most important and empowering questions that we can ask. And so today, I want to share what this question means to me as a filmmaker and a debater. So my name's Chris, and my relationship with this question began four years ago, when I was 14 years old, back in Australia. It was grade nine, and I was the kid that you probably all hated because he aced all of his exams and only showed up like two to three days a week. Most of the time, I was at home playing video games, thinking that I was having fun, but in reality, I was pretty lost. I told myself two stories. School is too easy, and there's nothing fulfilling for me. And so grade nine blurred into grade 10 without me doing much at all, really. And Luckily for me, my bubble got popped. My school had been selected to represent Australia in this event called the Parliamentary Debate World Congress, or PDWC, here in Japan, in Saitama. And I was selected to be on the team because my Japanese grades were good. And then so suddenly I was flying to Japan and I was meeting all of these amazing young people my age from all corners of the world. Amazing young individuals who were not only way smarter than me, but some of whom led much harder lives. The girls from Afghanistan told me how they were at risk of being bombed every morning as they walked to school. The team from Shibu Shibu just down the road told me how many hours per day they studied. Like, as you can imagine, I was pretty shook. I had no concept of how these people were living their lives. And then, of course, I also learned what debating is all about. Debating, like a lateral thinking riddle, helps us look at things from multiple angles, laterally. And so PDWC was my catalyst to start searching for the missing pieces. Afterwards, I looked back at my year nine self and laughed. Like, it was so obvious, just like the riddle, I wasn't asking the right questions. There were clear avenues I could have taken to be more satisfied and driven, all right in front of my eyes and yet overlooked. What assumptions did you make when I told you the riddle? That the man was a criminal, and that's why the guy pulled out a gun on him? Or that the bartender was psychotic? No, my, my boss told me that the answer to both of those questions is no. And the point is, these assumptions are stories made up by our subconscious to fill in the blanks. And that's why I think this question is so important, because I believe there's a chronic case of missing the stories that unconsciously dictate our opinions, that, that underscore our habits like a musical leitmotif. And so I want to share two particular stories with you. How many of you have said something like this in school, right? OK. Some of you are adults, I'm sure. But everyone, all, all of us have said this at some point in our lives, right? So especially at school. We hear our friends say it, and we're like, OK, well, because we're teenagers and we want to try fit in and be cool, we start saying it ourselves, naturally. And then even though often we say this as a joke, we're still saying it. And so more and more we say, I'm going to fail this exam. I'm going to fail this exam. And soon that narrative can become a reality. The psychologist Carl Jung outlined this famous model of our conscious development. And he said, basically, when we grow up, we start in that outer circle where we act out our realities. As kids, we grow up and we crawl around and dribble as toddlers and all that fun stuff. And then eventually, we start, having, we start seeing images and having thoughts, and then eventually articulating our realities. And so when we tell ourselves a story like, I'm going to fail this exam, we don't realize how much that story is seeping into our actions. We tell ourselves we're going to fail so much that we actually begin to fail the exam. And just like the blind assumptions that we made with the riddle, we blindly overlook stories like this every single day. 
Remember, I overlooked the stories, school is too easy and there's nothing fulfilling for me. And that just led to me sitting at home playing video games for a year. What about this story? When I was trying to solve the riddle, my boss is like, Chris, you literally suck at this. Why don't you try putting yourself in the shoes of the man like you do in debating? And I'm like, damn it, I am putting myself in his shoes. And all he's doing is ordering water, saying thank you, and walking out of the bar. What am I meant to make of that? So I was frustrated. And I'm like, as a debater, even with the skills, the lateral thinking skills that debating taught me, I couldn't solve it. And then, of course, I realized why. As a debater, I'm still embedded in this I am right narrative. I don't search for what's missing. I look for the things that are going to validate my perspective, that are going to prove that I'm right. And I know, of course, I said earlier, debating is a great way to laterally think about things and build empathy, and yeah, yeah, but let's be real, we're all debaters. Who here has had an argument with a sibling at some point, right? Or tried convincing mum to let us go to the party or whatnot? Yeah, I guarantee you were not empathizing with that person when you were saying that story. You were trying to get something that you wanted. And then what about POIs in debating? When we stand up and say a point of information in debate during someone's speech, Surely these questions in debating should be about trying to get to a more deeper truth. But unfortunately, in my experience, that hasn't been the case. Points of information have been about trying to throw off the other speaker to prove that you are right, and it doesn't get anywhere. And so empathy isn't built into our debate culture. A debate culture is centered on this necessity or this endorphin rush of wanting to be right or intellectually beating someone. And of course, this right, or, this right or wrong narrative is the duality that stops us from, prevents us from solving these issues. You know, it's a, this story is so deeply entrenched in our culture, in our society, that we, we tend to miss it. In our politics, it leads to polarization and building barriers between cultures, sometimes literally. Uh, in our relationships, it leads to never-ending arguments and, well, in trying to solve riddles, it leads to us getting frustrated with our bosses like me. Okay, so we're missing the stories that we tell ourselves and absorb from others. And on top of that, we're embedded in these, these toxic debate societies and dualistic paradigms. I haven't painted a very good picture here. But that's okay. It's not all bad news. Because the best thing about framing these stories as things that are missing is that all we have to do to find them is go on a search. So I invite you on a search. And to solve our riddle, to search for these stories, we need to do one important thing. We need to see ourselves as storytellers. This year, I became a storyteller due to the incredible kindness and generosity of a woman called Kazuko Nakadai, the CEO of PDWC. She invited me to come live in Japan and make documentaries about the students that attended the conference. And so I've been going around and interviewing these amazing students and, and, and editing and spending hours and hours editing together videos that show off how awesome they are. And one night as I was editing, I realized that there were two things going on. On one level, I was just cutting and rearranging clips on the Final Cut Pro timeline, but that wasn't all that was happening. There was something else too, it was more than that. As the storyteller, I was bringing an active voice to that video. My intentions as the storyteller were a vital part of the creative production. This is important, right? It means that it wasn't just about the content of the videos, it was about the context as well. And that's why I think we're all storytellers, because all of our lives are like this, right? Content and context. It's kind of like our lives are a television drama. On the content level, we are the characters in the drama going like, oh my god, like, Kenzie broke up with, with <laughs> Kevin, and oh my god, did you hear that Suzanne quit her job? Like, can you believe it? Like, we're, we're in these stories, we're in these narratives, right? And we can sometimes miss that we are also the storyteller. We bring context to the situation. We are the author and main characters simultaneously in our TV dramas. And so, as an author, I think we need to step into our roles as authors, because as authors, we can start to see all these narratives that, we've been, that we have been overlooking. When we, say, I have no, when we say, I'm going to fail this exam, we can catch ourselves saying that and say, no, actually, I don't want to act out that reality. As authors, perhaps we might even consider that we play a fundamental role in creating all of the good and bad plot twists in our TV dramas. And this authorship, I really think, is going to help us transcend that right and wrong duality. It's going to help us cultivate proper empathy by being able to see things from a higher perspective, all of the moving and missing pieces from a higher angle. When we can do this, we can start tuning in to those missing stories. And we can start tuning in to everything that we've been missing.
And so by now you're probably wondering, well, what's the answer to the riddle? And it's hiccups. The man had the hiccups. That's why he walked into the bar and ordered the glass of water. The bartender noticed this. That's why he pulled out the gun and pointed it at the man to scare the hiccups out of him. And it worked, and that's why the man said thank you and walked out of the bar. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I know it's a dumb answer, and I didn't just waste 10 minutes of your time for that, because it's a dumb answer, but you get my point. There's no possible way to solve that riddle if we're not willing to let go of what we think is right, if we're not willing to break down our assumptions and go in with an open mind. And I say, let's go in as storytellers, and let's look and really listen for that question that the riddle wanted us to ask the entire time. That simple and yet quintessential question, what am I missing? Thank you.